Ready? All right. Ready. You're live. Yeah, man. What's up, fool? What's up, fool podcast? Welcome to the What's Up, fool podcast. Uh, today, we're sponsored by the Felipe's World face masks. Uh, get your <laughs> Felipe's World face mask at felipesworld.com. Um, these are the OGs, bro. These are the real, these are the real, real, real face masks. N95. Yes, and you have little hands. You could put you you could put you could put your hands in here, man. You'd be like, ah, you could stay warm with them, man. Eh? <laughs> like a quarterback. That breath. You you could have grab some toothpaste with your finger and put it inside this hole, and you could smell fresh breath, and you 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 don't gotta deal with your own shit breath all day. Like I know, like sometimes. <laughs> You have a face mask and it starts smelling like shit, and you're like, "Fuck, it smells like shit," but it's you, bro. But with these, they have filters, so you could just buy a regular filter, filter, and put it in here, man. And how much are they, Lisa? Twenty bucks. They're oh, twenty bucks, oh, man. That, that, so there you have it. You can support the What's Up Food podcast because James James is running out of cut off t-shirts man so. <laughs> right out of sleeves <laughs> off the <laughs> shotgun, huh? man, man. Masks out of all the sleeves <laughs> always coming and they're, they're gonna make pajamas with his sleeves <laughs> we're gonna get him ready man because he's starting to look like james the cable guy all right <laughs> thank you for all you do bro he's been you've been a big help since day one People say, why, why you don't talk? Because it's a What's Up Food podcast. Yeah. Not the slaughter before slaughter. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you are you... a member of slaughter, right? I Thanks, am, yeah. I, I'm, uh, I play oh, bass. Yeah, see, everybody. Wait, everybody he has a... James is a member of slaughter, and that's why he's here. Not because of his talented work that he does. <laughs> he does talented work. But he's also a part of the family, just like Martin Moreno. Mm-hmm. I mean, Tanya Strada, she's a guitarist too, right? Yep, yep, she plays rhythm guitar. It's crazy, bro, how the concept just came out because when Martin told me that he had a mm-hmm. fake bat, <laughs> Oscar Torre is our guest, but Oscar, another guy named Martin Moreno, the comedian in high school, he had like long hair, man. He was like a stoner. And him and his friends made up a band called Slaughter, but none of them never sang. None of them picked up a, not, they didn't even pick up a guitar pick, not even a tambourine, a, a flute, a, a, they, they didn't even hum a new song, nothing. Air guitar. But they had a reputation of the band Slaughter. And then people would see them, oh shit, Slaughter is here. And then they would hit up my friend, hey bros, are you going to perform right now? Nah, man, I got like a sore throat right now. <laughs> Ready for tour with Slayer. A legend was born in eight in 1986, 84, somewhere like that, and in 2017 or 18. It finally happened. 2019. Slaughter. Last 2019. Year. Slaughter mm-hmm. became Slaughter before Slaughter, and mm-hmm. they cut an album, right? Yeah, we went out to do uh, Joshua Tree and uh, got really oh, loaded for a weekend. You too, oh yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it was good times. She moves. It's like something from a movie, bro. Yeah, well, you know, Martin and I, we went out to a, a Sum Forty One concert, and he. Equated- and, oh my God, bro! Sum Forty One, Sum Forty, yeah. The guitar is the rich, the famous. The guitar is hurt his hand. We needed somebody to play guitar. You. Uh- <laughs> We had such a good time. And he equated a lot of what was going on in the rock show to comedy. And he's like, oh, this looks like an applause break. This looks like a tag. And I looked at him and I was like, you know, this isn't, this is, this music isn't hard to write. And he goes, huh? And he was living by me at the time. Sounds like bullshit to me, man. (laughs) (laughs) You guys go with Deep Del Ray or what? Yeah, 100%. 100%. Hey, man, it's like music, man, like comedy, man. This story is like the, the Latino version of Spinal Tap. Right? Spinal Tap. <laughs> I think I need a Becky out of me. <laughs> wow, I didn't know that. Wow, yeah, that's a good. Because I know that I know I know that Tanya Strada, the comedian, she used to be in a band huh? with the mayor from Back to the Future. Yeah, she did. We yeah. made her. We made Goldie? her audition. We made her audition yeah. three Oscar times. Tourist, like to play Goldie. Goldie. <laughs> you had to audition for Slaughter. Yeah, we oh, made Tanya audition God. three times. 
screen he does. They were throwing a guitar picks at her. She was going. In front of who? Scott Ian or what? <laughs> air, air guitar. Air. I think you have to start questioning your choices in Hollywood if you're auditioning three times for a band that had never played before. Yeah. Yeah, like, that. that's, your, that's like a... A Portlander episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The season yeah. boom. James is um like the, the like the fucking um Fred Armisen, bro. With his he'll be dressed for the party, but nah, 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 nah. Yeah. <laughs> bad of Omer. Yeah. We get a lot of guitar guitar players coming in, eh? Right. Now she was uh she was she was the only one. <laughs> bro, it's funny because um I um you gotta already, you gotta already have fans, especially from the What's Up Fool family, some of the church, and um, mm-hmm. but my favorite episode is when um this they are trying to find a gimmick for their band, so they get a cat, the cat, and the cat is cat, <laughs> the band is called Cat Pal, yeah. Cat Paw, and they they put a like a amplifier on his little scratching pad. <laughs> Somebody said El Capitan on YouTube said the audition consisted of doing the air guitar. <laughs> oh, how about when the cat sells merch, dog? Oh, then, <laughs> the cat selling merch. They had a cat pal was about to move on to the next city because they already were too big for Portland. But Christian Wig was like a psychotic fan. She goes, What is the cat doing over there? Oh, he's counting merch. His little paw was going like this. <laughs> <laughs> that was counting in, dog. <laughs> so wow, man. I guess some of the slaughter by slaughter audition was fucking headbanging day. <laughs> we already went. We already went through two drummers. <laughs> Whoa! You guys didn't get last, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, oh, and Martin, I the audition Martin, tapes. Martin had the opposite problem of every other band out there. He had all these fans. He people knew what his band name was, but he didn't have any songs. Imagine Martin. <laughs> how am I gonna monetize this rap? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, dude. You can't hate for trying though, bro. Hey, bro you know it. what, man? People, people like it. Eh? And I know like um Oscar, this guy we're talking about Martin Moreno. He will in the beginning before his podcast, he threw all extravagant comedy shows like like we had the, he had this Halloween show where he produced it. Like, yeah, sure. It started off. They were gonna have a. It started off with chaos because he was just like a priest. <laughs> Not the band chaos. He was just like a priest, and he was passing. He he have a. They were passing out the Eucharist. He was like a <laughs> fake priest, and everybody was saying "Amen," and he was dropping um, edibles or mushrooms in their mouth. Or what are you crazy, uh, And we had a dating game. I hosted a dating game. You know, usually a dating game where. It's supposed to be like you're supposed to lead the woman. The woman is supposed to lead the guest. You know, like where would you take this to the movies? And then you go, I'll take her to the movies and have a nice dinner with her, blah, blah, blah. And then whatever, right? We asked the guy, what would you take her out to? We'll take her out for a restaurant, a nice movie. You go, what do you they asked the girl, what do you prefer? Fuck it, just put it in my ass right now. And she was off. Whoa. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. Went, whoa, whoa, okay. <laughs> I guess that's the end of the show. <laughs> we were supposed to lead to that, eh? Yeah, people, Damn. I remember people at that party lost their jobs the next day for not going to work. <laughs> yeah. Probably. Yeah, so Shout out to uh, Doug Love. Doug so, wow. Uh, so, what's up? We have we got uh, the kid over here, uh, Martin, uh, Martin Rizzo, Uber no. driver, Lyft driver, Instacart driver, porn Instacart, star yeah. now. <laughs> skater dude comedian All around good man hey bro um, um shout out to your skating board videos they're tight you know because there's no stand-up i'm getting just good at skating yeah i noticed from your videos and um i've been watching a lot of your skating videos since all the schools are closed everyone's skating in them huh Dude, it's also nasty because the trash can smells like shit. Nobody's taking out the trash in so long, dude. <laughs> it's it's probably well, I don't know yeah. So school way. The janitor has been furloughed, dog. Yeah. We got Rodrigo over there behind the red curtain. What's up, dog? How Riverside, bro? Interviewing people right now. It's fantastic. Guess it is. <laughs> hey, where are your masks? We got Lisa <laughs> over here, man. She went, man. 
Shout out to Lisa Esparza, man, setting up all my interviews. A hundred interviews, bro. Like eight hours a day. <laughs> Something oh. like that. It took, her an, hour to it took her an hour. A round of applause. A round of applause. An hour to set up this uh, billboard right here. <laughs> Stupid this easel. Tripod is That's kind of cool, though, dude. Like how you pop out the jet? podcast, fool. It's like you're promoting the special. It's good, dog. Good, dog. This, this tripod cool. is the weakest tripod ever, bro. <laughs> if you hey. want anything, everything falls like a puzzle. It's a little bit. <laughs> it doesn't it's have precarious. a leg to stand on, you know? Uh, <laughs> I, I, did a, I did an interview where they wanted to interview me, and I couldn't even mention Netflix or anything Netflix. So I, they, as soon as I got to the interview, the ladies, the producers, they could you lean to the right, and I had to cover up Netflix, bro. <laughs> no <laughs> way, dude. <laughs> that was only one of I could have said Netflix. Yeah, so watch my two specials. They're somewhere, eh? <laughs> They're in the club. All right, eh? We did a round, a roundabout. Let's introduce our guest. This guy, man, we don't have to read his IMDb because I already did even before he knew it. <laughs> He's the Oscar Tore. He's an actor in Los Angeles, man, who Producer, came out here and, and is doing it, man. He has a show of Tyler Perry, The Have Nots, which has been on forever, right? For like four years now. The has and the have nots. Yeah, man. And right now he's at his house, man. He's out. He reads tarot cards on a Zoom. <laughs> with a green with a green bro, screen. Your house, that I have your house, you're a curandero, bro. No. <laughs> Where's the egg, bro? <laughs> My wife thought this was a good idea at some point. <laughs> Having a green wall behind behind us. Little did she know that we'd be zooming. Two yeah. years later. And everybody's putting fake backgrounds oh, behind you. you got to tell you, <laughs> I've been, a lot of people have been, like, been gathering up Zooms, you know, that are funny. There's those Zoom motherfucker. This guy's this guy doing Zoom with his teacher. And it's sad. It's sad. This poor kid, bro. Two roaches bad by, bro. Fuck. <laughs> That's embarrassing, dude. <laughs> Trying to get their learn on. Get a exterminator pro bono, dog. Yeah. <laughs> I, emailed your face- number, I emailed them your number, bro. Oh, oh, another one, dog. Hey, Felipe if- said you can help me out, eh? All right. <laughs> Imagine FaceTiming a, FaceTime a girl and then the roaches walk in the background. Fuck, dude. To be, fair, to be fair, Felipe has never told anybody, contact this guy, he'll hook you up. Because <laughs> this guy's a good exterminator. Call him. They, right there, right there. If they're, if they're throwing charged, out that they want to hook up, that's on them. But Felipe, you look at them all. How long have you? Been, I have never been seeing you next to that fool. No, you know he doesn't <laughs> promise us. Stuff. You charge them full price. Yeah, man. Shout out to um, um thank you everybody who watched the special. Thank you very yeah. much. Um, uh, right now the special is going um ghetto gold right now. Hell yeah, <laughs> ghetto well, gold. Ghetto gold. <laughs> well, I see people watching that shit on their forklift, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, made up the, I made up this funny tweet. I said today that um, my comedy is for people who think Cholos eating sushi is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> my aunt saw it, dude. She liked it a lot. She's like, I finally get it. And I know why they like them. <laughs> I, I finally get it. it yeah. Hilarious. I remember I when most. you said that uh, your mom, what did your mom say when we took your, we first started hanging out? Oh yeah. Uh, oh, wait, when you wanted uh, to take me on the road, and she's like, "You guys are gonna go by ourselves on that hotel together alone?" I'm like, no, fuck it. Oh my gosh, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I think I know that guy. That's funny. People, so funny dude. I don't have a skating company, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Brooklyn Project, man. So Oscar and I, we, we worked on a project. Actually, there was a project that came around um, five years ago called um, What's Up in LA. What's and up? I was, supposed to, I was supposed to play a postman, bro. Like, I was like, ready, bro. I, 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 even, I had to merge before I had the lines. <laughs> and, uh, you did the videos. I remember you did the promos. I was at Burbank. I was in Burbank. Burbank. I was one last comic standing, I think. I don't know if it was 2010 or 12. It was, I think it was 2012. 2012. Yeah. yeah. So I, was I, was high, bro. I was like, fuck, I'm getting rose. I don't even have to audition no more. What? Surprise. Get past that USA, right? Yeah, it was, it was, was like, what's up in LA. Yeah. It was yeah. what's up in LA. What's up in LA. I got hooked up by that guy, by another comedian who's a friend of the guy from What's Up in LA. Um, Carlos Loma. Carlos, Carlos Loma was the one that gave with the initial phone call. 
and wow. uh, we kept talking and we met with my manager the time, BK, Barry Katz. And then how, how did you get involved? Because you said you worked with a guy? I did the, I no, I, I didn't work with a guy. I had done a movie called uh, Ladron Que Robo Ladron in Spanish. It was a comedy for Lionsgate. And they had seen me in that. So that same thing, they offered me the role of the dad. And that's how, that's how I got involved. But it was a while before before we actually shot the pilot. It, it took a while. And then you came on board. But they, but you never shot anything, though, Felipe. You did. He didn't shoot well, anything. I, I only oh, shot, shot the pilot. No. Oh, shot Felipe, Felipe yeah. didn't shoot it. No. no. I think no. Paul Rodriguez, they replaced it with Paul Rodriguez, right? Yeah. Because yep. they backed out because it was going yep. nowhere. It was going nowhere. And then we just Felipe, said. Yeah. They, they told me, I asked him about Felipe, and they said, well, something about his manager. He's being, his manager's being difficult. That's what I heard. <laughs> it was you. You're the manager. It wasn't going uh, anywhere. I said, this is not going anywhere. Let's move on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it took, uh, it took too long. It did. To get, they, I think those, those guys just had, even though Felipe and I were new to everything back then, and but we just knew that the way he was going about it was not the right way, and these guys were inexperienced. I mean, they wanted. Did they end up shooting four pilots? They wanted to shoot four no, different we shot, pilots. Yeah, no, we shot. We shot the pilot twice in front of a live audience. I mean, they put they put on a good show. I, I gotta say, it looked. They basically like did any, a presentation. They didn't present this pilot any time. No, no, they shot the whole pilot. It. Yeah, we shot the whole pilot from beginning to end, and right. we shot it twice uh, with a live audience, and they had a wow. band, and they they did it right. It looked like I, any just, any I'm sitcom. Just, I'm just saying, though, like they didn't go about it the way a TV normally gets put on the air. A TV show normally gets put on the air where you meet. You have a showrunner. You have the writers. Oh, put I together see. Oh, first, that. Yeah, no, no, I totally agree. You go and pitch to the networks and then you spend your time and money making a pilot. They did exactly. it in reverse. They did it the other way around. Yeah. So they, they spent the money and pilot. time without. Yeah, exactly. Sort of like Tyler Perry. Mm, kind of, except, except without being Tyler Perry. <laughs> except without a billion dollars. Oh, well, Tyler Perry did um his first Medea play. No, nobody was coming to see it. Nobody was coming to see oh. it. And I read that um he walked into his his church, and then like from presented it to the the parish, and they liked they invited everybody there to for free, and they loved it. And then they just spread to other churches, and it became real big. He toured with it. All the he quality, an audience. the comedy, and the how um, clean it was, and it was yeah. it was very good to them. Then you just blow it up, bro. Like, but nobody wanted to give money for that play. Nobody, nobody, like, and it was, it was like it was like even before he fund me or or um, all those places you can go to get money. Nobody was believing in him. Nothing. I was like, damn. And now he has a how big is that studio, Oscar? It's. Twice the size of Warner Brothers. <laughs> it's, like a, it's a city in wow. there, right? It's a city. The guy's brilliant. He's building. Last time I was, last time I shot there was last July that we shot two seasons in a row. He knew about Corona before Corona existed. He wow. shot two seasons. That takes us into 2021. And uh, last I heard, he was building a freeway inside the studio so he could shoot <laughs> freeway scenes. Wow. wow. Stop okay. traffic and stuff. Miniatures or actual? Yeah. Actual yeah. freeway. Yeah. That's Instead of blocking wow. the street like they do here. Yeah. He built the guess White gonna, House. Guess who's going to book studio. Guess who's gonna book that freeway first? Marble. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they shot, they shot part of Black Panther there already. Yeah. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's the brilliant thing is it's not just protecting his own film and controlling his own filmmaking. He's able to rent that out to other major productions and he's making bank off that. Oh, he is. He's not. That, that, guy, that guy's smart. brilliant. And he does everything himself. Yeah. He directs, he produces, he writes. Brilliant. He acts. He act, well, he doesn't act in the show that I made, oh. but he's doing everything else. That, um... Crazy. He, 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 um, he had a hotel, too, you told me, right? No, no. What's happening is that the studio, it's huge. That used to be an army barracks or That's something. That's right, army barracks. So now with COVID, when nobody can shoot, you know, most studios can't shoot, he was able to close down the whole studio and just shoot his own shows, put up the actors there, flew the actors, 
I know they're they don't, they don't have to go anywhere, right? They're like basically. They don't have to go to the airport. He flew the actors on his private jet. Nice. So they got yeah. tested in LA and New York. The actors from LA and New York got tested. When they arrived, they got tested again over there. He kept them a day until they got the test results in. They couldn't leave the, the room. And then he has he built like a city there with a restaurant, bar, everything. So nobody has to leave. And then he shoots, he shoots everything in two weeks. He'll shoot a whole season in two weeks. Wow. Damn. Wow. Which is, so he was the only the first one to shoot when Hollywood's completely closed. Crazy. Wow. That's like That's uh, ahead of his time. That's like taking it to the next level, man. Uh, 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 um, doomsday preppers. <laughs> yeah, dude. Nah, man. What do you have, bro? Yeah, are you saving up cans? Nah, I got my own city, dog. <laughs> Damn. That's that, like a that, Disneyland. I got my own bank. <laughs> Modern you, day Walt you, Disney. When you uh, look at the history, like I, I remember watching that movie Chaplin with oh, yeah. Robert, Downey, Robert Downey Jr. and Dan Aykroyd. I guess he not he not. I don't know if he's the head of studio, but he has he has, he has his own films. Charlie Chaplin was doing his films till Charlie Chaplin wanted to direct and produce those movies. But if you look how it was back then, it was all farmland. And these guys had the idea to buy up these sad farms that wasn't producing anything anymore and build a studio, a city. Like, who thought, who thinks like that, eh, man? Like, Hey fool, you remember that one time we we're in Jacksonville and watching those old that old ass Frank Sinatra movie and it was Glendale. And it was over there kind of where you guys live, but it just showed like it was just basically almost like farmland and just hills. And it was like way be and right next to Burbank right before all that shit happened, dude. That movie, by the way, that movie we're talking about, it, it was on at two in the morning and we saw it to the end. And it was a movie called Frank Sinatra. With Frank Sinatra starring in it, and um, the, it was the, called the, Frank Sinatra. No, the real <laughs> Frank Sinatra. It was two in the morning. It's one of the, you. You've heard the, the name before. He was a detective, and the the, the cop in that movie was the cop Kuklukski in uh, Godfather. The guy that beats up Al Pacino in the first. Yeah, one. he's the cop in that movie, and Frank Sinatra holds his house hostage because he's going to assassinate the president. And oh, that was the, 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 the Manchurian like candidate. Yeah, candidate. Four, yeah. Two, four, I didn't know four um, Italians trying to kill the president. And when uh, JFK was assassinated, that movie was taken out and was never Damn. seen again till later. Because um, fucking um, well, Fifth National loved JFK, and they don't want no. T- they don't want. What if this was that movie would have brought up more conspiracies? Oh, for sure. Back then, yeah. <laughs> dude, dude, I just seen that movie, that little uh, thing on YouTube called Dark Legacy for the first time. Oh, my God, bro. Mind blown. What you, what you been doing, um, Oscar Torres, since uh, the pandemic started? What um, what, you, what, what was the first thing that you, when you said, oh, orale, coño, it's serious? <laughs> I think, yeah, something like that. I said, coño. I when you first started house, realizing got... shit's getting bad right now? I'm what? When did, you, when did you start realizing the pandemic is getting bad? Like, this shit is, is whoa, okay. Around March, man, when things started really closing up and stuff, I'm like, wow, you know, these people are willing to close businesses, hurt the economy because of this. This shit's serious. This is not, you know, this is this is about survival. Yeah. But, uh, uh, I never been through anything like this in my life. Oh, nobody the closest, has. Closest I guess <laughs> would have been 1987 during the Whittier Narrows earthquake, which pretty much scared everybody in the project. We were all living in the park, and we we're, yeah. we're, we're we made up campsites in the in the parks. Wow! And uh, water, and there was no more water, bottled water. There was no water, man. Yeah, they didn't have a plethora of bottled water the way they do now. That's hard to find back then. Yeah, jugs, maybe. Spar- sparkless jugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> giant things. Maybe. Hey, Felipe, was there people that stayed inside the projects too? They didn't believe that that shit was going to fall out or everybody was in the park? Well, some people, my dad, bro, you know, we had, we had, clothes, <laughs> we had, we had clothes hangers. We, we, I'm going to tell hang, you something right now. Bro. <laughs> we had clothes hangers where we hang our clothes. Like, there were six lines. My dad got five sabanas, five sheets, 
<laughs> and yeah. named his own little fucking um Fort? little room Fort? where he slept on. <laughs> no his way. Airbnb. His Airbnb. Yeah, like, bro. He made a fucking sixty-inch extension cord. <laughs> put the right there, bro. Oh. He and never was TV. happier. <laughs> <laughs> Watching TV, bro, looking at the sky. Hilarious. Yeah, that's hey, life out there, dude. <laughs> hey, hey, Doug. I... Bro, he doesn't let us in, dog. <laughs> Wasn't yeah, a password. Hey, he had a mistress in there, dog. Hey, That's his man cave. Man. He had a hey, mansion dog. in there. <laughs> Bro, he looked, he, he looked like tossing salad guy from the curtain. So CSV. I was gonna say in '87 that winter in Arrows, dude. I was nine, dude. There was a family living in their van that didn't want to go back in their house, dog. Bro, it was everybody, bro. <laughs> I remember that full, that full El Catrín. His mom and his sis, the mom and sister slept in the bed for days, dog, forever. Man, I never heard yeah. about this. Hey, you know that cheap ass castle was gonna fall, fool. <laughs> Be looking at People the northern. Were scared, dog. People. When were you born, Martin? 89? 87. 87. Oh, I mean, you're born 94? that year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still trying to get these. Northridge, baby. <laughs> Northridge, baby. I, I remember Northridge a little bit. That was, that was crazy. Good. Yeah. Seven years later. You're going to remember this pandemic, bro. That's all you're going to remember. You're going to tell your kids, I was driving around town everywhere. Making <laughs> <our nose>. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, skating. <laughs> Trying to survive the pandemic of 2020 to 2025. Are you still on picking up groceries for people? Um, I have I, I kind of slowed down because dude, I, there's some crazy jobs that had to go up fucking stairs, and it was Costco jobs. I'm like, fuck, dude, you know? Oh, Costco's a night. How do you shop for people at Costco? You have to have a membership yourself. They give you uh, your own membership, oh, so I have my own. Oh. Yeah, so I have my own. If you guys need shopping, let me know. I'll go for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I need an air fryer, dog. I need an air fryer. I don't have enough space at our house to store shit from Costco. I can never can. It's not worth it to us. <laughs> you guys gotta go to. I ask her, I saw a trailer for that movie we did. I did too. What you think? They told me for your eyes only. Don't show it to anybody. Don't t- you're the <laughs> only one to see it. Did they tell you the same thing? They told him the same thing and then he showed it to me. <laughs> That's exactly what I did. I showed it to my wife. <laughs> how long did it take? It to me? How long did it take you guys to shoot that movie? A month. Yeah, four weeks. You guys, well, we had two days. But if I can tell you, we had two days that we, everybody was scared as hell. We had two false positives. So they stopped wow. in the of my scene. In the middle of my, of my mo- most emotional scene. The, <laughs> the medic. First time I ever see a medic walk on set and go, guys, cut. We got to stop. Are you serious, dude? I'm like, what the fuck is this guy Bro, doing on set? Damn. Stopping my scene. No. <laughs> He was the law. <laughs> that that's that uh that day was crazy, bro. Because um a lot of uh, we were shooting by MacArthur Park and um Pico Union area, and man, there's a lot of crazy people walking around the street. So we have to pause because a woman starts screaming in the middle of our scene, like, "Cut!" <laughs> she said her line wrong. And then the guy, <laughs> the guy scream your name. Then I gotta go, what's up, fool? Yeah. <laughs> Say my movie name. <laughs> Man, they were fools going over their eight by ten, bro. Trying to make it. Hey. Bro, there, 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 there was like there was these dudes watching the movie, watching the whole movie like this out of their apartment window, bro. These two, these four paisa, four Mexican men, fat dudes, drinking their beers, bro, watching the whole scene because they're they're like Omar Chaparro fans. They're watching the whole scene. And they told him, yeah, go inside, eh? Because we're trying to get a scene. These motherfuckers go on the roof, bro, and watching the movie, dog. And then they put the camera from a shot, and they catch him in the <laughs> <laughs> They're bootlegging the movie from far away, dude. Hey, he couldn't get away. <laughs> you got to give credit to um, Omar Chaparro, bro. That was the nicest guy, bro. Sweetest guy. Remember the, 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 the background? The background guy that knew all his life? Guys for how long, bro? Uh, what did he speak to Omar for that background guy? Oh man, he always he would always talk to him. He would look and go, Oh yeah, you know, you know, when you were when you were 19 years old, I remember that you were your cousin. And Omar didn't even know what cousin he was talking about. Oh no, yeah, yeah, no, I read somewhere that you dated uh, uh Talia. I'm like, what? No, that's not damn. true. Oh, I read it, I read it. <laughs> I read it, I read it. And then four. That fool is there, and every time they yell cut, he'll look at a bunch of Omar. 
¿Cómo te preparaste para el papel de, del mariachi? He was in love with him. The guy was in love with him. He just started talking to him, bro. He goes, and I told that guy joking, joking around. Hey, wait, no se ve que tenías un podcast. <laughs> Omar was trying to get him to talk to other people. He goes, hey, did you see, uh, did you see ladrón que roba ladrón? The guy goes, yeah, yeah, but you, uh, he went back hey, to man, Omar. No, 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 no. Hey, bro, that day that we were shooting that night, that day, though, it was, a, it was a, one of the first times that we were going to do a fight scenes, right? And Omar Chaparro, bro, he'd been training and boxing, and he was going to fight Oscar. By the way, Oscar did not train for this fight scene. No, I had no idea. <laughs> They brought in a, a guy named Coach, who's been in 335 movies as a stuntman. Damn. And 83 movies as himself, you know? You know, the, you, you know, you know he's a real thing when his nose is like this. His yeah, nose bro. looks like he, it had been. He said he threw he a box, so he showed us photos. All, all his fights are like, all his photos <laughs> are like this. <laughs> his nose. Look like somebody went like this. It was his nose was like his ears. Years. Oh, but he could roundhouse still. Oh, he got that little Joey Medina nose, dog. So this Washington. dude's like a fighting, <laughs> a fighting coordinator, dude. Like he he teaches the other guy how to throw the punch, and he tells the other guy what you, everything is timed. Oh, like everything so take is it. timed. He it's was choreographed, right? It's I mean, basically. No, totally. No, he was, but no, but he remember he had like, he had me like catching the punches with my hand right in front of my face. He had me doing that. And then he had us at some point they would say freestyle. And when they said freestyle, basically you're really hitting the other guy, but in the arms. Cause you guys got to flow. I was, doing those fo I was nailing Omar. I was nailing, I was nailing the lead. I'm like, Hey, you know, it's not every day you get to hit the lead actor. <laughs> well, then, um, and then uh, fucking Omar pulled a handspring, bro. Damn. How? He went too low or what? He had to get a so out of the fucking, uh, luckily the stomach man. Oh, I pulled a hamstring. I pulled a hamstring. Yeah, you pulled a hamstring, right? In the fight, yeah. <laughs> you're, like, you're a fucking calambres, bro. The second day. <laughs> the second day. That was a, <sighs> shot the seat. remember that? Like, the medic stopped us. We were. Oh, they we they put a gang of ice and they were putting it on his leg in between. Like I was massaging my leg, my butt. What happened, Coño? You went too low or what? No, man. The thing that happened is we shot the scene. It was going beautifully. Halfway into it, like I said, the medic stopped the scene. Then we concluded the scene a week later. Oh, that's right. The scene, we took the scene halfway into it, my screaming scene. Halfway into it, first take. First take, and I had stretched out. They had seen me stretch out and everything, you know. <laughs> it's not my first time doing this. I stretch out to be sure I felt good. I throw a first punch. I'm supposed to miss the punch. I throw the punch. I feel my leg, my pop. I hear a pop. Damn. Oh, shit. Damn. Pop, pop. Cut. <laughs> the medic shows up on set again. No, we got to stop. Yeah, they so stopped they had, with they, that day, too. Yeah, that's they brutal, bro. They massage me or whatever, and then we, we kept going like half hour later. Campeón. No, no, de madre. <laughs> How long have you been acting? Living. How long have you been acting? I started Oscar. acting. Uh, I started acting in 1993, by coincidence. A uh, girlfriend. I was in college. A girlfriend signed me up for an acting class. I had, I told her to sign me up for an elective. I needed an elective, but I wasn't acting because I was very shy. And she thought it'd be very <laughs> funny to sign me up for an acting class. Hilarious. Uh, Who had a lady and he was shy. <laughs> I was training oh, yeah. the class. I was sitting in class like this the whole time. I was looking at all these weirdos go up and you know do the imaginary imaginary ball. And you're playing with imaginary playing with imaginary ball. I got balls to play with. I don't have to imagine. <laughs> Every I thought it was idiotic. And then the those nerds. That's how intro uh, intro acting classes, man. <laughs> and then the teacher said, "You got to go up on stage and do an." Do an exercise or I'm going to fail you. Imagine failing an acting class in college. <laughs> Not wanting to be an actor. So I did an, I did a, an exercise. 
I had to go up and imagine a circumstance that was real that happened to me. And it, it became real. At that moment, I forgot that I was in class, that there were people in front of me, all that. I started crying, which at the time I, I never cried, especially in public. Uh, I started crying. And I just walked out of the class. I'm like, screw this. This this made me too vulnerable. But I it's got like I was perfect. <laughs> the teacher said, you should take it more seriously. And then she invited me to another acting class that I would go. Again, I would sit in the back. I wouldn't go up, but this time I was interested. But the first years that I started acting, I was horrible. Horrible. Everybody was giving me acting advice. Everybody. In the street. I got I, I got lucky, and I'm lucky. I booked <laughs> the street. My first audition ever was at a Spanish soap. That was a huge hit, and I booked it. That was good because I got work right away. It was bad because I was exposed as a bad actor. So people would stop in the street go, oh, hey, I saw you, Maria Elena. Hey, you know, uh, you got to work and be more natural. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking plumber telling you how to act, huh? <laughs> oh, hey, was, was that a novella? A novella called Maria Elena. It was a very famous show. For the, I think my mom's, uh, that was my mom's novella back in the day, dude. That was on both coasts, Doug. Both coasts. Eduardo Yanez came out on that one? Eduardo Yanez was the lead. Eduardo Yanez was the lead. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. That's a novella, yeah. I did a movie with him in 2015. We started a movie together called Ladrones. Second part of Ladro, Guerrero, Ladro. And I told him, I worked with you. I was so bad that he didn't remember me. Damn, dog. That's how bad I was when I started. (laughs) I got fired. I was fired. And the other thing is I wanted to sh- I wanted to be noticed. You know, I wanted to be just- I got a job as an extra and as an extra in a movie that was being shot in Miami. I'm from Miami originally. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah. and they fired me. They fired me from the job for calling too much attention to myself. I said, You're an extra. <laughs> hey, fool, this is fool said I wanted to get noticed. <laughs> and then, Hi, dog. You said spinal tap. I did a movie with one of the guys from Spinal Tap here in L.A. When I first started, when I moved, I was an extra. I needed the money at that point. So I, I was background, and the guy told me, we're playing waiters, and he had this big monologue. And I decided that, I, you know, I was going to be very real and get emotional with his monologue. It wasn't an emotional <laughs> monologue, but I wanted to show that I, I could get emotional. I got range. He was a director as well. He stopped. He cut. He says, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm reacting to you. And he's like, yeah, but why are your eyes all watery? This is not a... <laughs> Let's do it again, please. I'm please. sad. Don't though. try to upstage me. We went again. <laughs> we went again, and I'm like, screw this guy. He doesn't know anything. He's the lead. <laughs> I did it again. He goes, stop. You. Back of the line. So he put me all the way in the back where nobody could see me. Damn. Damn. Tell him when you first saw me in an audition. Ah, oh, you remember that story? We didn't get the job either one of us. So, <laughs> I see Felipe in, the, in an audition for an, some NBC show that we're playing. We're playing a, a chauffeur. It would have been a chauffeur. It was one of the leads. So, Felipe, I see Felipe show up with a backpack. And you were supposed to go before me. Your appointment was before me, but you were late. And you showed up. You sat down. You asked me, you were like out of breath because it was like on a second floor and you ran in. Go, hey, have they called? Have they called anybody? Yeah, I go, no, no, it's just me. I just, oh, okay, okay. Oh, okay. So you, you empty your backpack, you take out this wrinkled headshot. You're trying to iron out the, the headshot. Remember Saturday. Felipe acts, <laughs> literally goes like this. And I saw you say this in the con in your comedy. <clears throat> And I turned to my wife and said, no, that's not a joke. He actually did that. And, <laughs> and he took he went through the magazines that were there. He found cologne, <laughs> grabbed the thing. <laughs> oh, cool, huh? And then walked in. He walked into the other <laughs> He walks out. And Felipe did something that most actors never do, which was great. It, was, it shows you what kind of nice guy he is. He turns to me as he walks out. He turns to me and goes, "Just so you know," he's whispering to me. But he doesn't realize the casting director standing right behind him, <laughs> looking for him to stop, finish, so she can call me. 
And he's like, just so you know, the lady, she's, she's very serious. And uh, it's a small room, so you're going to feel a little crowded, but, uh, you know, and it's just you and the camera and her behind the camera. All right, hey, good luck, man. And you walk. But the whole time as you're telling me, I'm looking right over your shoulder that she's standing listening to <laughs> <laughs> I remember I, I went to an audition once right there by Bally's, you know, on the same street as the Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles. There's the a brand? Yeah, 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 that's where it was. Yeah. Brand Pico. I went back another time for something else. And I guess I was eating and going over my lines. And when I get there, man, other actors are skinny, bro. They have like they're drinking bottled water and I have like a fucking giant orchata, bro. And I remember <laughs> going over and I say, Ain't nobody drink it, eh? <laughs> but I remember this community. Well, we gotta talk about Willie Barsana again. You know Willie Barsana? Oh uh, bro. That fool told when I went to I went. He did something that comedians shouldn't do either, Rob. He took me with him. And I sat in there in the audition room too, even though I was not auditioning. I've so done that. <laughs> I was just waiting and shit. And uh, but he's he's psyching, trying to psych everybody out inside the room by reading other lines that, that are not his lines. Because everybody's like, I guess they're white, and but they're not white, they're just not dark like Mexican, like we are, you know. And um but he's reading his line like this. Hey, vato. What's up, homie? You want to get shot, puto? Give me the fucking money, Holmes. So he's reading this. That's like a uh, Hollywood shuffle. Yeah, so he, yeah. Totally. he's pretending to read this fucking shitty monologue from Boulevard Nights. And he, I don't know why he's doing that. And like, people are just like, what the fuck is this? He goes in there, man. And... I don't think he unwrapped his audition or nothing. He just sat there, I guess, or something. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But, man, um, I hate what, I would hate when I would go to um, went to the to the audition, especially the one at fucking Fox, because that's a fucking long-ass walk, man. You got to remember, you got to you gotta park, and then you got to walk down those stairs, and you got to walk probably half a mile, man. Like, dude. Why don't I just park in the streets and you let me in through that gate? <laughs> oh, and that's that was back then. In the last couple of years, they make you park three blocks away. But I mean, it's not like blocks. It's like New York blocks. Three blocks away at the, at some garage by the mall. And then you got to walk across the bridge, go into the security. By the time you're oh, there, you're sweating. I... I know what you're talking about. That's that that's that mall that used to be yeah. good, but now they have mostly department stores now in one coffee shop. I was yeah. sitting outside of that Starbucks, you know, right there, the little bench. Yeah. And I fucking fell, bro. I fell off the bench and like four people saw me and I oh, got you burned. broke the chair. You broke the chair, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Story keeps changing. Okay, I broke the chair. I was, didn't know. Then I fell. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I wasn't but, there. I don't know. You told me the story. He said, right. He said, right. Bro, I, 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 I thought people were reaching out to help me get, to get up. But this guy was handing me his lawyer card, bro. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, Sitting on money, it literally. literally. It was his chair. It was probably it was his chair. Too, bro. But, I, but I had one of those, um, you know, when your arm rubs against a... a the, the, the bar too much and you get like a burn like a rug burn a little rug yeah. burn right here go <laughs> yeah man so me and Omar bro are, are, we're hanging out during a movie talking and shit the food making me bust up bro talking because we're just comparing other other because I'm asking them questions bro about everything bro hey bro what the like to work with Tyler Perry and he goes right now well, you mean me? Very short. He films fast, right? Yeah. Like how many? He don't. He don't do too many takes. You get one, two takes. It's, it's funny. You get one yeah. or two takes. He's shooting with three cameras at the same time. 
So you got to, let's say you got a line that's like, hey, if you don't pay my money, I'm going to kill you. In the, the, in the middle of your speech, you'll say, okay, Vinny, my character's name is Vinny. Vinny, say that last line again. And he tells the camera guy, hey, Bob, who close? So Bob would say, hey, if you don't pay me that money, I'm going to kill you. All right, we got it. Boop. And everybody takes off. They, they got it. And if you can't work at that pace, your character mysteriously dies in the next episode. <laughs> <laughs> there, was a guy, there was a guy that showed up at the hotel the same day I did. And he's like, no, nah, man, I'm signed to do 10 episodes. I'm like, oh, that's fantastic. The next day I saw him with his bags. I'm like, what happened? He goes, I don't know, man. I don't know. They, they, they shot me six times. That wasn't in the script. <laughs> did anything happen? He goes, well, I got stuck the first episode. I got a little stuck with a line. You know, it's a lot of lines. And uh, they're going very, he's telling me, and I knew, they're going very fast. And uh, and I don't know, the next episode that I shot, they they like they shot me six times in the head. <laughs> in the head. <laughs> to make sure you, you want to survive it. Yeah, yeah let's make hey, no mistake. Hey, bro, I was going to have me die on the set, dog. Like, fucking dying, bro. He said that one time, he, he didn't hear nobody yell cut, and they left them in a scene, bro. <laughs> oh, my first day! My first day! I'm gonna, I'm gonna. There's an ep, an episode that I get stabbed. I'm playing this mob boss, and they they try to kill me, and they stab me. Well, like that was a, a warning. Me. That was a warning from Tyler. That was a warning. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. I'm doing this scene, and I'm, I'm first of all, I'm in this robe, you know, hospital robe, and they gurney me in, and we do all that, and then I'm laying in the bed. And then my, my nephew comes in and I call him over and I can barely talk in the scene. I'm like, so this is a rehearsal, by the way. And uh, in a normal show, you know, Felipe, we do a rehearsal for camera. Okay, good, let's go. And then we shoot the actual scene and we're there shooting the scene an hour from every different angle. So I thought it was the same thing. So <laughs> Tyler Perry goes, okay, let's uh, let's run, say, say this, let's rehearse it. Say the line, but so. I start doing it. I'm like, hey, you know. So I tell my cousin, you got to find out who did this to me. I want, I want that guy dead. I want him dead. Whatever. The whole scene. I thought it was a rehearsal. I didn't hear anything because Tyler Perry's not in the room. He's outside in the, in the hallway looking at through a monitor. And suddenly I see everybody leave the room. Nobody tells me anything. They left the room. Fast. Taking camera, taking everything out of the room. Finally, one guy, and I'm still laying there. It's my first day. I'm still laying there in bed, in the bed, trying to figure out what's going on. What are, I mean, what are they doing? Some guy walks in to pick up a cable. So I'm like, hey, what are we doing? Oh, no, that was good, man. That was good. We got it. That was my first day. Damn, man. I thought I was I luckily I didn't think... mess up the lines. I would have died in that bed. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why he started with a hospital scene. I know. That'd be funny how you don't know what's going on. Um, could you do your scenes on top of that plastic? <laughs> <laughs> the plastic sheeting. Yeah, yeah. And you have well, a heart uh, attack on the scene. Do you remember? <laughs> do you remember that show that um, that Andy Garcia used to have? It was in local access. It was like a sitcom comedy with the guy. What's his name? Oh, you mean Capacity oh, USA? Capacity Stephen USA. Bauer? Stephen Bauer? Stephen Bauer? Yeah, Stephen Bauer. That's the, that's the actor that I've worked with the most in my career. Who? Stephen yeah. Bauer? Stephen Bauer. He's your friend, right? Uh, yeah, we've done like seven projects together. Remember I told no, no. That he showed up at somebody's party playing a guitar. His party? No, it was his party. Oh. Yeah, my friend went to his party. Oh, he's got a funny story about oh, it. Tell us the story <laughs> Shaq. Tell us the story about Shaq. What happened because, with Shaquille O'Neal and Stephen Bauer? He gets, Stephen gets, this is what Stephen told me. He gets an invite Hilarious. to Shaquille O'Neal's birthday in Orlando. At that time, Shaquille had a house in Orlando, or in Miami. I'm not sure. It was when he played with the Heat. Yeah, and Miami. Like, with, I don't know uh, Shaquille. That, I don't know Shaquille. That's, that's, that's odd that he invited me, but I'm a fan. I'm going to go. So he shows, yeah. up, he shows up to the party. It happened to be Scarface theme party. <laughs> That's why uh, Shaquille cool. invited him. And then he said he's there, and suddenly the doors open. There's these stairs and whatever. The doors open, and Shaquille O'Neal, all seven foot two, is dressed like Scarface with a white shirt. Uh, that's and, a big old suit. That fool must have loved that movie, dog. 
He's standing on top of the stairs and he goes, Manolo! Manolo! <laughs> Mario, he's all that shit. He starts saying lines, the lines. I have some questions about this story because Felipe told me that story. That's crazy. crazy. So did he know going to the no. park that it was a Scarface? I so. And I he didn't, wow, so he didn't bro. know why he invited him. So he just went. No, but he, you know, he got it. I'm sure Stephen got so, invited to a lot of things. So he didn't, he obviously then didn't get paid for this Malo, oh, this Scarface theme party, but it's expected to play along as Manolo then, right? Oh, yeah. You don't want to disappoint baited. Shaq, right? He kind of baited into it. Yeah, <laughs> That's you don't horrible. want to disappoint yourself with two guys. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. So. Oh my God. That's a oh, lot of pressure. Stephen told me, <laughs> Stephen told me that every day, every day, somebody will, will quote a line from the movie and wants to run it with them. Everybody, and he says, and he says, and everybody wants to play. Everybody wants to play Tony Montana. Tony. I mean, I'm Manolo. He's gonna be the sidekick to everybody. He's always a sidekick. And the co-host. That's crazy, man. Yeah, he was when he was on Joey's podcast. Joey was asking him questions about certain scenes, and he was like, "I don't know. I don't was, remember. I don't care." It's been so, it's been Forty so years long. ago. It's been so long. Yeah. You know, the best thing I learned about. The um, Stephen Bauer interview on the church was happening uh. was when he said that they shot Freedom Town right there where they shoot chips. The recycling area by the yeah. one ten, the one ten and the five, or one ten and the ten, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because the Cubans didn't want them in Miami. The Crazy, Cubans huh? said it, get, it gives us a bad name, so they they, <laughs> they basically boycotted the movie. They stood there where you know they messed up every shot, they, so they had to leave. They shot so, Miami Beach, and then they had to leave and come to L.A. So Stephen Bauer said that Shaquille O'Neal was throwing lines from the movie? And in his party. That's classic. Like, hey, Manolo, give that piece of shit. You know, he was like. <laughs> Hilarious. Who was dressed like Connie? <clears throat> Who was dressed huh? like uh, Al Pacino, uh, Tony Montana's sister? Oh, <laughs> with the open robe. <laughs> it's funny you say that because um, when I was working in um, Midland, Texas, um, I was um, I was doing stand-up comedy, and the owner of the comedy club, dude, I kid you not, when I went to his house, everything in the house was Scarface. Everything. The sheets. The entertainment center, the whole house, okay, and this guy, of course, he can't. He don't know how to reach out to Stephen Bauer to bring him over. But he does the next best thing. He brings over Angel Salazar. Angel, nice. Check it out. <laughs> Check it out, right? So I'm over Check here in Midland, Texas, with this guy, and everything's got face. Hey. Check it out. So, Angel Salazar. I guess he got booked three times a year at that club, the most in any, in any comedian. And the guy has a photo of him in his house, bro. He's super happy, like a super Scarface fan. Angel. You know, the house is in federal prison right now, doing 25 years. But, <laughs> but Whoa. The guy, yeah, see you later. Eh? That's besides the point. <laughs> well, he, he, he rose to the level of his idol, I guess. Have you, 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 to, follow, uh, you follow Angel on Facebook? Do you follow Angel Salas on Facebook? Do I? No, no, no. It's hilarious. He's always he he'll post stuff as his manager, and he'll he'll announce Angel's death on Facebook multiple Angel times. Like he's done this before. He does it's it. All like a, the it's time. a character. Either Angel has gotten arrested or <laughs> Angel <laughs> drowned by uh, saving a little kid. Or Angel uh, blew up on a car, or it, it's always hey by a terrorist, <laughs> <laughs> and people get pissed at him. People get pissed at him. It's the funniest thing. He's fucking crazy, dog, but he's hilarious, dog. That's hilarious, <laughs> dude. Fucking tag, retarded, funny, dog. He'll say he'll, Angel will write stuff like, you know, I was at the strip club and I was doing lines off the girl's chest, right, Oscar Torre. Wasn't I? I'm like, what the hell is he? Why did he tag me? I said, I was there. He saw your name come up. He just <laughs> hilarious. I can tell you get soft on you. 
He's funny as hell. Out. I met Angel through Steven. I met Angel through Steven. Man. Those are two party animals right there, dog. Man, that's, uh, that's, that's, they got some stories. <laughs> hell that's yeah, so dog. Cool. You no. didn't say forget about it, dog. Hey, do you think um, the, the, I know that, like, um, do other Cuban actors know each other? Because uh, I know, I know, like, I know I, sometimes I see like the, most of the Latinos were pretty tight when it comes to that, um, the Imagen Awards. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, well, you meet, a, you meet a lot of them at the Imagen Awards. I was, I, in fact, I presented uh, three years ago, I was nominated. I lost to Diego Luna while I went for Star Wars, which I'm still pissed. I'm telling you, bro, that's the same thing. I, I lost to a cooking show. You lost to a cooking show. Oh, that's my God. Yeah, Shouldn't were... have been in a stand-up comedy category. Uh, here we go. But uh, I met Eat. Eddie Gannam. She and I presented together. I think my heart works. Eddie Gannam was, was the lead actress in the movie uh, Felipe and I just did. Seventh and Union. Right. And her brother was in it, too. Her Are you... brother, who we, thought, who we thought he had COVID. Remember when somebody <laughs> tested positive? He, he just looked. Hilarious. We started, we started going, okay, who's not here? Who's not? Felipe and I started going through everybody. Who's not here? Oh, her brother's not here. He's got COVID. So we kind of started a rumor until we found out it wasn't COVID, here. Man. <laughs> hey, man, on the last day, they had, they were get, man, it was cool, man. Uh, when everybody, they had like a, co- they brought in a coffee truck with good ass coffee. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And those drinks. Hey, you said drinks. you said that uh, you work in uh, Rodrigo. You're gonna die, Rodrigo. You said that you work <laughs> in productions where they book you to do a movie and they try to get rid of you before they can feed you. Oh my wow. god! Are you serious, dog? That's the best Low part budgets. about it—the food. Low budgets. <laughs> Low budgets. Yeah, they'll schedule you. Like Bro. my call time will be one, not twelve thirty. One. Oh, wow. What if you get there early, though? I get there early, yeah. Well, they'll, well, they'll, and they look at you like, oh, you're early. Yeah, I am. Because you're paying me $150. So I'm about, I'm going to eat everything here. <laughs> um, so <laughs> that's why I don't work for movies for 150 bucks. The food's always bad now. Uh, and they, they, they try to wrap you before dinner. <laughs> hey, go, go, go. What's that? Nothing here. Oscar, what yeah, the longest, good. Yeah, what the the longest you worked on a set? The longest? My, I did a movie called mm. Eeny, Meeny, Miny, Mo in Miami, uh, in South Beach, with my a buddy of mine. Well, he's a buddy of mine now. He was I, I didn't know him back then. His name is Jokes. He's the director. And, uh, man, shooting in Miami is not like L.A. That crew, they're not in a rush. It's like... <laughs> It's like living in a third world country, like working in a third world country. I think, you know, they take the time, they take smoke breaks, they take coffee breaks. Un cafecito. Cafecito, yeah, everybody would stop. So we would, <laughs> we, we had days of 16, 17 hours. Oh my God. Damn, Damn, dude. Dude. Estamos trabajando. No, no, and the movie was about the drug world in South Beach. So it, it, looked, it felt like it. <laughs> we got to take our time. We shot all night. We shot all night. Like, like my call time would be 6 p.m. and then we go until daylight, you know, until they kicked us out of a of a bar where we were shooting. And then I would go, I would go eat breakfast, and then I go and sleep all day and go back to set. That was my for a month and a half. Wow. Miami was a South whole other Beach. world, though, man. I was in South Beach. I saw the beach once. <laughs> Literally. Where are you from originally? Miami. I was born and raised in Miami. Hell yeah. Local. Not Cuba. My parents are Cuban. So they, they, people always tell me, hey, so Cuba. Ooh, I, was, I went to Cuba. I've never been to Cuba. I'm like, I don't need to go to Cuba. I was born in Miami. Miami's Cuba, but with food. I don't need to. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a whole nother, that's a whole nother planet, Miami, dog. Yeah, that's dude. That's where I'm from. That's the planet I'm from. <laughs> It's funny pretty much like the American Caribbean, right? That's what it is. It's funny how you guys have the Cubans, you have your own rivalry, you know, between each other, like Mexicans. Other, with other Cubans, yeah. Because we make their own, who makes the best tacos. You guys have the fight over who makes the best uh, medianoche or Cuban sandwich. You were a guest. You were, were you, I was a judge of that. You were a judge of that too, right? 
No, but no. I was I went to the the um I was staying my hotel was near where they were having the Media Noche festival or Cuban summer festival in Tampa. Oh, I thought that you knew the guy. No, I yeah, was I know that guy. performing and I saw was well, a lot of people over there. And they were they were having a Cuban sandwich um, or media Cuban sandwich festival. And well, man, you couldn't be everybody. a judge. I just thought it. You couldn't be a judge. You're a vegan. Yeah, he yeah. would eat that. You could. You'd be judging the bread. <laughs> so I ate. I was walking around, and my friends they were picking out man. But I just had like a bowl of um, of um, black beans and bananas and white rice and yuca with garlic, and I was good, man. Hey, you, you, especially you, you ate well and uh, when we were shooting 7th and Union. They had these little bo- portos. People don't know, don't know portos. Portos are baked. Porto. Love it. Oh, yeah, bro. Porto was part of the... <laughs> made him stutter. <laughs> Felipe, I was counting. I'm so excited. I was looking. People like, people like, Felipe. I go, wait, Felipe has eaten. I don't know how many portos he's eaten. And they're like, they're like, we no, no, no. Back. Because you kept one box. You never switched the box. He goes, no, no, no. Felipe has had the same box the whole time. I go, no, he just empties the other box inside his box. <laughs> kept one back yeah, the, the guava pastries? Yeah, because some pastries, of the pastries right? had like meat and some that had frosting. The guava ones. Had, just have fruit. Yeah, and that's so good, dude. Tear those up, bro. It was good. Love it, dude. I, I had my share. Wow. I, I was joking, but I had my share. I bought home. One of the days I was in the, that van and they dropped me off right in front of my car. I grabbed, you know, it doesn't change, man. It doesn't change. You go back to like when you have any money, it's the same mentality. It doesn't matter. It's like it's free. I would take the snack. How you I do that at Tyler, at Tyler Perry Studio. I take a bunch of uh, the snack bars, those <laughs> snack bars, especially exp- I can look for the expensive ones. Even though I might not like it, I'll still take it. <laughs> you want the value. <laughs> got to try you it, have bro. to. Some, someone, just, someone just mentioned on YouTube that you're going to die in a fire in the next scene. <laughs> <laughs> on the yeah. freeway scene. Because <laughs> I just said that. That is crazy that, well, Tyler Perry is so smart to build his own freeway because even when we go back to the, when we go back to normal and everybody goes back to work, I don't think... Uh, filming in freeways is going to be very expensive. You don't have to stop traffic. You don't have to do any of that stuff, dude. Oh, no. No. And it's so big. The place is so big that he can Permit, have that, that goes around it. Fuck yeah, bro. That's like Disneyland. Like, not very far, dude. dude I, re- I read an sh- article on uh, Wall Street Journal real quick, and it just said it, basically Tyler Perry Studios is an entire city. So I was like, is. damn, dude. Like, that's why I asked you that earlier. He just That's why I'm saying he just built the White House. He's got a show hey, called The dude. Oval on BET, and he built the White the White House, not a mini sized White House. He built a White House that's like blocks. Extraordinary! Wow. That's crazy. The White House, and he yeah, knows he's gonna melt that because now you don't have to go to the White House to shoot the White House. They'll book this place. Atlanta, that's boom. insane, dude. And we got Martin Rizzo right here worried about karate outfits for fucking uh, Cobra Kai <laughs> sketch. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what's the, what's the budget on that sketch? It's uh like ten dollars. Two sandwiches. <laughs> but you you know those supposed to be doing karate in the park, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy, dude. Damn. What, up, what, what awesome. have you been uh, What you been working on since since we worked on Seventh and Union? Besides Tyler Perry, have you been going to auditions? No, man, I haven't auditioned too much. I haven't auditioned too much. I know some people have. I, I have I've been promoting the show because it just premiered uh, last week, so that's that's pretty much what I've been doing most of the time promoting. And I I directed I directed two projects, three projects. One just came on. It's coming out on Amazon tomorrow. It's a short film that I shot as an experiment with 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 a camera. I shot it with an iPhone. Oh wow! Wow! I got What's distribution for it. What? What's it called? The Conquest. The conquest. So to watch it on Amazon, it's free on Amazon Prime. I'll get like two cents per <laughs> view or something. Tonight, yeah. uh, I don't know if it's up yet. It might be up yet, but I'm not sure. And then the I directed conquest. The, conquest. the Conquest. 
And that was on your phone, dude? That's so cool. On an iPhone. I wow. should have that out. You with, just did it with uh, the iPhone? Or, but you did live eating and all that stuff as well? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Film right. Pro, one of the good things about shooting with iPhone is we shot in a bar, in our hotel in a bar. I didn't pay for it. We stole those shots. Because you're shooting <laughs> with like, they asked somebody at the bar, it's like, but the lady, my wife, who's playing the lead, the lead, she keeps walking back and forth. Well, why is she walking back and forth? And I said, no, the thing is that, you know, we're getting married, and I proposed to her here, and we're reenacting the first time I saw her walk by. But we're not getting the shot because we're not filmmakers, and we're shooting. I go, oh, no, no, that's fine. Can we help you with anything? Dile malgasolina. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. Yes, can you just sign dog. this release right here? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Hey, we like your autograph. We like you. Can we get your autograph, sir? Right, yeah, right there. And just put a neck on or whatever. It's cool. He's over here shooting both fingers. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you just inspire a whole bunch of people yeah. now with their phones, dude. Yeah, the yeah. bird break shuffle, dog. Totally. It looked great. It looked great. I got. I mean, I got distribution. <laughs> Damn, that's so cool, it was dude. an experiment. I shot everything in four hours, Tyler Perry style. Like a G, wow, bro. Cool what? One take Scorsese, like, bro. Like a, like a G. Yeah, yeah, like a G. It's seven minutes long, though. It's not, you know. That's still good, show. though, man. Yeah, you got it on Amazon, dog. Well, I, I, shot another, I shot another short that I shot two weeks later. Um, But that, you know, that I spent a little bit more time and stuff. And now we're editing. And I did a I did a, a, a short film that I directed and starred it with my wife, and she wrote it. It's called COVID nineteen Sins and Virtues. It's a uh, fourteen movies that's going to be released as one movie, and it's fourteen different stories. and And we were one of the filmmakers that were invited to uh, to have a film. So that's that was fun, and it's all about COVID. It takes place to we play neighbors. My wife and I play neighbors. Two neighbors that. Kind of come together because of a tragedy. It's fucking cool, man. That's cool, man. You've been busy there, man. Damn, and we dude. shot that with an iPhone. We shot that with the iPhone as well. Damn, dude. People have no excuses anymore, man. I don't have a camera. You got a phone, bro. You know? Yeah. No, well, you download True, Filmic dog. Pro. Something called Filmic, Filmic Pro. Pro. Filmic Pro? Filmic Pro. It's an app that you can download. And with that, you can, you know, you can balance a light. You can do a bunch. You can do tons of stuff with it. You can shoot a 4K. Damn, just have dude. sound, you know. That's dope, that's, man. That's how we did those two movies. You're that's inspiring awesome, me. What's it called yeah. again? The, the app? Yeah. yeah. Hey, by the way, I'm not being paid for this, for the app. <laughs> Filmic, but if you want to pay. Found it. Filmic Pro. You found it. They got a they got a free version one that's like nine ninety nine or something. I think I have the free version. I'm not even sure. <laughs> you sold it on the free version. <laughs> you can get you can get the the paid version once you get the money from the Amazon. <laughs> I don't want to go over a bunch. You know, I don't want to go. Cash the check. Don't want to spend nine ninety nine. <laughs> I feel you. That's guys. cool though. That's like okay, like inspiring, dude. Yo. That's cool, man. And dude, these all these little secrets and insights. I mean, you know, if motherfuckers sitting there listening, dude, I mean, like Rizzo said, you have no excuse. Young filmmakers always ask me, what should I do? You know, because they want to be stars. That's what they want. Hell yeah. Don't they, <laughs> don't up, they don't want to work. They don't want to work. I go, you have a phone? Yeah. Shoot, some, write something. There it is. And everything that showed up is right there. Yeah, there you go. You can bat. You'll see everything you can do there. Just the play first, with it. The first bubble is, you want to go to the pro version? <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it says upload on Amazon. What? <laughs> so yeah, I tell I tell young filmmakers, you know, grab your phone, write a story. It could be anything, a monologue, like any film. It doesn't That's have to be you good. Say that, man, you shot this whole COVID the movie with the iPhone, and you didn't buy the app. That will be the first movie to release a computer virus to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> that's a real. That's a real COVID, dog. Yeah. That's a real <laughs> Rona. What happens to your phone? It's, it's, it has a fever of two hundred. It's hot. <laughs> it don't work down mouth. Yeah. Oh, I try to put my. Well, I didn't. Lisa tried to bring back my iBook to life. Motherfucker did not want to come back. Why? I never did nothing to it, bro. I just didn't want to come back to life. 
Oh, it what has, happened? It's no, it's not. It's not dead, but I don't afraid. feel like it's worth reviving because it's about twelve years old. First of all, the first right? iPad. Yeah, no, no, no. It's a, it's a, a laptop. Mac, it's a Mac. It's a MacBook. It's a MacBook. Uh, MacBook. A lap, it's a laptop, but it the uh, operating system <clears throat> is so old, and I uh, we needed to upgrade. So you go to up. You can't just upgrade to the newest. You have to go in steps on Max. You know. Oh wow. Like, horrible. Fucking Apple. I just want to kill. You gotta keep on buying it. That's it. No. Yeah, but they also they always assume everybody's gonna be moving forward and never going back. But so they don't make it available. So you have to go fucking hunt for an older operating system. So. Horrible. Anyway, I did it and then I wiped it clean. There's no operating system. So now I can't even create a jump drive because wow. I. <laughs> Because I purchased Ma- Mountain Lion, you know, Lion OS X, which is for so long. The ago. one that was using the old original? one that was originally on that laptop. So I go and purchase it and then it, they don't show up those purchases because it's old. It's an old program. So even though I purchased it, Apple hides it by default. It so I have to go. I, I'm telling you, it was such a trek. I just said, forget it. I'm just going to buy a refurbished Mac because I remember that this Mac also has an audio problem already. So I don't want to waste my time. Trying but to it's just like it. Apple's lame because they, they act like even Steve Jobs never existed. It's fucking stupid. It's just they, Apple. They, they, Apple they, assumes they're... I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Apple, I was just going to say Apple. Go ahead. <laughs> they're behind the game, bro, that they really got rid of a garage band when everybody was doing their own iPod. Well, they upgraded GarageBand and got rid of the we're podcast doing, feature. We're no. doing our own podcast on GarageBand, and then they get rid of GarageBand, and you got to find yeah. GarageBand somewhere no. else. Dude, the original oh. GarageBand is the best GarageBand ever. Yeah. And then I they had, had the new one. I had that, to give you that on a drive. Because dude, it's I know. fucking horrible, though. It is a real deal, though. It's good, huh? Dude, but the original, dude, the original one is, dude. That's what Net- Apple was known for: being user friendly, and then yeah. they did not become that anymore. Like they, dude, it's fucking. They're nice. stuck. They're stuck in the like ten years ago. Dude, yeah. that's why I said, dude. I mean, I don't even want to talk Lisa, shit, dude. Lisa, <laughs> all that that you, Lisa, all that that you talked about that you did with the the yeah. MacBook and all that. Does Felipe know how to do that? No. Okay, so he's like me. He's like me. I'm listening. I was listening to you. I'm like, I don't know what Maybe. she's talking about. It no. sounds like it's really <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm trying to paint it with a big brush because it's the details are boring. And he had the same look. Felipe had the same look in his eyes that I have when <laughs> so, when my when you were no, talking. I'm help desk in so, the whole house. Yeah, that's. Me. I'm so bad. I was doing a, a Zoom interview yesterday with Fox in Atlanta. <laughs> what in the show? I've used Zoom. 15 times, maybe. So I click on the thing. Nothing comes on screen. By the way, it's East Coast from the West Coast. It was 6 a.m. for me. And I'm here. My wife's name is Chudy. And I'm waiting. And I'm waiting. I'm supposed to be going on. They were running late. Nobody told me. Then I sent a message, text, nothing. And I'm like, <laughs> Chudy! <laughs> sleepy. Yelling, she wakes up like she looked like she's gonna have a heart attack. She's like, what? What happened? What happened? I'm like, hey, <laughs> zoom here. I don't know if I'm on or <laughs> that's how bad I am. That's funny, dude. That's how technology gets you sometimes, man. You can get close and it doesn't work. It's like fucking frustrating. Dude. But the, the most frustrating thing about Apple is that they are created, like you said, Rodrigo, their whole mission was to Originally. make it user friendly. But they make they they assume the general public is stupid and they're going to fuck shit up. So they lock the computer like they don't let you get into your computer and dig around and do stuff like you can do with a, a Windows machine. And, and for or the Android. longest time before USB technology existed, they had proprietary fucking attachments, just like they have with your phone charger. It's different than everybody else in the world. Right. So it's that's by design. But. If you know what you're doing, which is the the place where I am, I know what I'm doing, and they make it t- ten times as hard. If you know what you're doing, you can't move, you can't maneuver around the world like you can in a in a PC world. Sorry. Yeah, or Android. It's frustrating. Somebody said that Rizzo has to poop. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> yeah, I poop. But, um, I'm full. I don't. I had some Cajun food. I'm fucking full, but- dude. And also, with, I read a little uh, article in Wall Street Journal about that, that a lot of people are shifting back to, like, Samsung products and those other products because of those little things that uh, 
uh, Apple has put front with you know their uh, I guess their audience or whoever's buying their product. You know what I've what uh, Apple's good at making iPhones so Oscar could make movies. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> they got good, the, they got good cameras. Check those apps. So like, you know, he's going to have a watermark because he didn't buy the bottle. He didn't buy it. <laughs> 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 Never know, dog. Never know. What was that? Even that, I shot with an iPhone, right? And I'm all excited. I'm shooting with the iPhone. So they come up with what? The iPhone 11? <laughs> and then they got three. Yeah, they got three. Three. Yeah, 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 Your movie does not look good as good. It does not look as good as you had an iPhone 11. <laughs> Bust up, fool. Shout out to La Lando Kell listening in on the podcast. What up, dog? Lando Kell. Yeah. Ranger Izzy, Tease Rock, John Reyes. Greg Riley, shout out to him. Anybody want to buy a motorcycle? San Diego. He gave one away to uh, Dean Del Rey. He gave, wait, he gave one to Dean? No. Nah. Uh -huh. But he's in what Harley Davidson in San Diego, right? Yeah, it's Harley in San Diego. Raul, Rizzo, Raul, El Capitan, Toke, Torti, Raul, Ryan, Ryan Garcia, Edward, Elvis Chavez, Tanya Strada, Raul, Edward. But okay, same motherfuckers. Right. <laughs> What's up, Boo Podcast, man? Um, Don't forget, people, we got the award-winning masks. These masks right here. They're high quality. They, they're good. They freak I'm out happy people, with them. Man. I have like <laughs> three old Karens. Tell me that they got scared already. And, um, <laughs> and why are you going to stick your tongue out at me? I'm not really going to wear a mask, you know. Now they're, they're, now they're telling you. And they don't even know you. Wearing. Yeah, they don't even know you. They like your mask. They don't yeah, know you. Yeah, tell them to watch the news when they want to get scared. Uh, anybody you showed up to set, <laughs> Felipe. You showed up to set the first day with a mask on, yeah. Looking um, all serious, it was early in the morning. We, um, we're gonna be at Wise Guys Comedy Club in Salt Lake City in next week or two weeks. Two weeks, two September weeks. 17th to the 19th. It's gonna be uh, Martin Rizzo, Rodrigo Torres, and Toby Hicks. I'm excited. Oh, you know, I'm ready for this. I can't wait to hang out with Toby Hicks during the COVID-19 COVID, bro. Let's see how he reacts. Oh, he's been so scared. What do you think's been happening to black people, Felipe? <laughs> We've been suffering. <laughs> you were scared back then? He's gonna be he's more scared now, dude. Fool. Oh know, my god. I'm like go, oh. go watch uh Bill Bill Burt podcast. Uh, we dropped some knowledge about comedy. Hell I yeah. told Bill Burt about the Mexican comedy scene, how it's like the comedy boom of the 80s. And they were, they were telling me that they, they should learn Spanish. I said, bro, you guys don't got to learn no Spanish. They know who you guys are. They're popular enough to go, go, to, go to Mexico. You can go to Mexico City and sell out a 1,500-seater two nights, come back home like nothing happened. Me, on the other hand, I can't do that. I have to go to Mexico and open up for a comedian to get ready for my special. And it's out now. Lisa, <laughs> executive produced again for special. Yeah, yeah man. That's tight. I've, I've seen it hey. a million times. Also, so fantastic. Um, Tanya Strada, she also hooked up that car. <clears throat> that car I drove. Oh. Yes. Victor Rios. Victor car. Rios. That's beautiful, badass, dude. Beautiful and Lincoln. Th now, that car, if you haven't seen the inside, it'll match the outside. But um, <laughs> nice car, It had a few bro. flaws. That car was like, eh, 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 eh. it was cool. And the jacket, bro. and the jacket, and the jacket. Sorry. Bro, somebody said that I never thought that the coat from Dumb and Dumber. No, the cool. the shirt, the tux shirt, <laughs> the ruffles. But but I hadn't realized till that person said that this morning. They're the exact same color scheme as the Dumb and Dumber shirts. I don't know if this was subconscious or what, but. I died. I died. Oh. Hand died. Eight shirts, different shades to be Lisa the right. Lisa died, by the way. I died bro, they're they're all dude. You that, can't uh, buy those in the store. How uh, that on the Spanish special? I love the colors how it came out with the lavender. Mm -hmm. Like, bro, that's awesome. Hey, the, the music was cool, dude. Those guys are badass. One thing about the second special that uh, uh, our friend uh, Brian Figaro, yeah, from um. 
from Pennsylvania, he said that the purple what what really? made the special look good because he, he mm. said he said it. I mean, the purple is like royalty, bro. I love that shit. That dog. food drinks. Lavish. Bro. He drinks. I'm thinking maybe he was thinking of Crown Royal when he was thinking about it, bro. <laughs> no, actually, back in the, the day, purple the purple is the color. Back in the day, the color purple was expensive because they had it was hard to get the dye. Yeah. Yeah. Have you seen the movie Color Purple? <laughs> And thanks for putting us in the beginning, bro. If the comedy clubs are open, we'll be getting free drinks and sodas right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so food on. You're going to start getting chicks, eh? Uh, What's funny is that everybody was self-conscious about their looks. Like, I didn't want to talk about me. But uh, when people done. said that uh, he, just, he sounded fat on the announcing. <laughs> and, and I heard Martin Rizzo say that he looked, he didn't like the way you look. It was stupid, eh? Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> but that's how you look, bro. <laughs> 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 hey, this makes I'm getting so many so many people messaging me, but remember when you, we were in last comic stand and you played us on the first episode? I got free drinks at every comedy club because of that, dude. Hey bro, somebody was somebody <laughs> who's, said, was, who's, who's watching that shit, dog? Somebody tagged Martin, only Martin on that video and said next victim, bro. Yeah, I have to say, I have to say that uh, I love the opening shot. I really wanted to cut out the fucking shaka bra by this dude. Down here. I'm sorry. Hey, <laughs> I, I wanted I, to cut it out, but the shot was too no, pretty. I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know. I wanted to do something fucking natural. I didn't want to be all like I, I was like, Ugh. Hey, like I didn't want to be eating me. I'm from Southern California. What do you want me to do? I was. I was scared, That's dude. Hawaii, dude. I love Hawaii, though, too. <laughs> those are my. Those are my bros. And for Hilo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, I was scared in in, in, uh, in uh, <laughs> Mariner, dude. Hey, I was scared because some shots, like I would take my glasses off, but they shot that my glasses would be on. I'm like, I just fucked up the continuity of <laughs> the fucking beginning. So, I'm over there trying not to look fat, dog, and fucking boom. <laughs> Sucking it in. What do you want from me? I was watching the video. I was like, fuck, gay. There's a lot of videos of the side of me, bro. <laughs> right, I'm I, remember, surprised. Remember, I remember that that shirt didn't even fucking fit, bro. We had to fucking it was open torn the in the back. <laughs> <laughs> we tore it so that it wouldn't be Lisa, tight. No. I told Lisa, it don't fit. It don't fit. She went, <laughs> I said, "You're wearing your jacket. You're not gonna take your jacket off, right?" Yeah, 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 said, yeah. Nope, is it all right? Oh, man. Dude, those are those are little tricks, full uh, like experience. <laughs> it was behind the scenes, dude, that we gotta fuck talk around about. You that. do that special and that shit tears. Fuck that, dog. Was that Tommy <laughs> Chong? Was that Tommy Chong at the beginning? No. no. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody reviewing it said that it, was, it fit. Yeah, he's, was like, he was there, dog. <laughs> Stage crew. Hey, you know. <laughs> what's the name? Um, <laughs> that's funny, man. How Willie Nelson just shows up. Huh? <laughs> yeah, dog. <laughs> Hey, so you know that for one. I didn't see him nice working stuff. anywhere. I felt like he was a plant, like an extra that just. Oh, like, that motherfucker oh, came out last night. I seen every time the fucking the dre- they rolled uh roll, dude. That dude was like. Right, but exactly. I didn't see him on the crew anywhere else. No, like, he, he I'm not even doing shit. He's like he been doing that for like 40 years. Yeah, and just that, to be on camera. When I was a when I was a kid, there used to be a, a place called Victor's Clothing where everybody got their suits. And when I saw the, the my my special, I remember this fool. <laughs> yeah, that mural on the side. Mi amor divino. That <laughs> kind of music, huh? Leo Dan. Do, 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 do. Leo Dan. It's like that. I think everybody. I think the opening was fat ass. As soon as you see the little wheel squeak, and then um the, the music. Was so cool. different, dude. Oh, the, the band music looks cool out there, bro. They got their own music video, bro. Yeah. Yeah, quarantine, yeah, what we wanted, movie. yeah, what we wanted to do was our idea from the very, I don't know, years ago was to have the camera following Felipe going in like good, like good fellas, you know, where you oh, don't, there's the just kitchen. one cut all the way through the kitchen. We had it all planned out. We, ha- we were going to plant the band That's members awesome, really. throughout the kitchen. But this place was just not laid out like that. So we had to fudge it. But I'm happy with the way they did it. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. Look great. It's it kind of what we imagined, but it, it's very great. cinematic. It's a whole different thing. Yeah. yeah. That's just fucking good, man. People like it, man. I remember some people are tagging Rodrigo, but they didn't even know that that who did the announcing for the other yeah. special, too. Yeah, no, but no, you know, no, Forrest did the other one. Oh, no, no. That was um, 
We're not gonna oh, for the it's first gonna, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, but, uh, the second one. Second one. Yeah. Translate this. Translate this. The, the 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 you was Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll say that people people that are fans of you or people that are fans of you, they're gonna see just like the background and be like, oh those are the people that are part of the crew, you know? Dude, like you see dude, people are already talking, dog. They're all like, dude, this homeboy came out, dog. It's just like comedy. Motherfucker yeah. ain't talking about nothing, ain't talking about Trump, it's just jokes, dog. Uh, but dude, like, like, dude, ghetto shit, dog. But dude, that shit's funny, dog. <laughs> it's, it's timeless because you dog. can't tell, you know, it's like what, good, yeah, what yeah, year it is. But it's good, dog. It's yeah, fucking good. Know, uh, Johnny Roque for showing, taking a photo at the end of the special. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, man. I got, a, I got a name too, a credit, eh? Hey, fool, that fool fucking said he's getting DMs, dog. Settle down, <laughs> dog. Hey, can you take pictures of me? <laughs> that, 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 that motherfucker got a haircut yesterday. This bro, oh my God. bro, the special <laughs> changed him, dude. Hey, 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 his his uh, check finally showed up, bro. After all these months, it's unemployment. Check. Fin- finally, dog. Thank God. Did you dog. get yours, hey, Rodrigo? I'm not even gonna lie. I got my shit going, dude. All right, see. All right, I, like, dude. But I was gonna tell you, like, but Johnny was saying, like, he, dude, like Johnny's talking about, like, dude, Johnny, bro. Oh my God, man, dude. Like, good things are gonna happen, man. Fuck, like I'm getting DMs. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like fool, like what the fuck, dog, dude. But anyways, dog, <laughs> that fool was making me die, dog. Hilarious, dude. The special he, he's, he's excited, dog. A lot of people <laughs> the show are watching the show, trying to oh, trying to laugh and find themselves. Yeah, but you know what, too, dude? Like they're really two different specials. I know they're two different languages, but it's a different feel, a different, a different rhythm, feeling. dog. Like fucking um, again with the color, like even the setup. And even do those cranes, how you got like, dude, how you even came down on the shots on the English special? That's just tight too, dog. Like, dude, you can say whatever you like. That's the uh, orange count. That's the observatory. Before that is the galaxy. Like, if you've been there to see shows or whatever, it doesn't. It's not even that spot. It's a the, It's a theater. It's tr- it's crazy, bro. But it looks better right. than a, it looks better than a traditional theater that place. Yeah, you know? dude. It's like yeah. it, it, it's really fucking cool. Yeah, when we yeah. saw the over, we were, we were desperately looking for spaces like uh, four weeks, three weeks before we shot. We were, the crazy. first place fell apart. A bomb ass drop, like smooth. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's nice. It's look, really happy. Look, the shell, a real empty man, when it, before we added everything. It was a black box theater, basically. Yeah. Yeah, fuck yeah. Yeah. But the, the thing experience. that it has in place is those arched rails, you know, the arched seating, but it's kind of curved. Yeah, and yeah. from the air, from the aerial view, you can see that. And that's really what I thought was beautiful. And I thought we should sure, highlight that. So anyway, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Let's that's go. Cool, Let's go. Wrap it up. Oh, um, what's it your great. Instagram? Oscar Matore. ¿Qué pasó? What's your Instagram? Where people going to find? Where, oh, where can people Oscar... have to watch a movie? Is it out now? The I have not. The, the show? That's the fun. show is every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Uh, on OWN, on the Oprah Network channel. And um, that movie you do, the, oh. that, that movie you did, the um, the funny one, La Drone, La Drone, you're in part two or one? I'm in both. I'm in part it's one. Funny, right? It's funny. It's a funny movie. I, I play an out of work actor who's very method <laughs> in the movie. But he's not a good actor. He's not a good actor. And he gets recruited to be a, a con man in this heist. It's like kind of Ocean's Eleven, the feel of the movie. And we got to pull off this big heist and it, it all. And I'm supposed to convince these people that I'm a union worker, play a bunch of different roles. And the second one, I played Texas Ranger. I volunteered to play Texas Ranger. And I thought it was baseball because I always wanted to be a baseball player. I said, <laughs> it wasn't baseball. It was a Texas real Texas Ranger. Texas Ranger. <laughs> so I have this accent and, I, and they go, you supposed to, And I play a Cuban refugee from Cuba. So, I, you know, I barely speak English. And suddenly I have to sound like I'm from Texas. So... I come up with this accent that looked like it sounded like Heath Ledger, a bad Heath Ledger in Brokeback Mountain. You know, remember? <laughs> rock, 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 rock. I can't leave you. <laughs> I can't quit you. Quit you, you right? <laughs> You're the cop in the hangover. Let's talk about that. The hangover. That was, man, I didn't think I'd get that movie. Damn. You know, everybody wanted it, but it's, it's, they weren't like a lot of, they weren't like a lot of roles besides the leads. And um, and as a cop of Mexico, in Mexico City, and I went in. I did. I had a good audition. And then they brought me into audition for the director, uh, 
who uh, directed Joker. Not Todd directed Phillips. Joker. Todd, Todd Phillips. Phillips. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Todd Phillips, and he was great. And I found myself, I found myself shooting in the, the first scene that we shot was the was the last scene I had in the movie, which is they're outside the police station, and I tell the three guys to get on the on the limo. Um because they were being taken to John Goodman. But I don't smoke. And in the scene, I'm supposed to be smoking. So that's, it. I wasn't stressed out about working with them or anything like that. People go, oh, how was it work? It was fine. It was the smoking that I was nervous about. <laughs> so the scene, so we're shooting this scene on the outside in Arizona, by the way, <clears throat> right next to the border. So we're shooting and they recreate, it's supposed to be in Mexico. So they have, like a street vendor with its little cart. They got a, a donkey or something. They got a guy riding the bike. The and the cue is when I turn on the cigarette, Bradley Cooper turns to me and says, what's going on? Then a limo shows up. It, it all goes on the cigarette. The limo shows up and I tell him, get in the fucking car. That's that part of the scene. I couldn't light the cigarette. It was windy as hell. <laughs> and every time I would go like that, every time I go like this, there, and I can see by the corner of my eye, the car, the donkey, the bike, the 100 extras walking in the street, all to the director say, cut, back to one, back to one, back to one. Man, the pressure, I, I never felt so much pressure. Acting. It had nothing to do with a scene. It had to do with a cigarette. The wind and the cigarette. One of the takes, oh, I was duh. so focused. I was so focused. I'm like, I'm going to light this cigarette no matter what. I'm going to light this cigarette. This time, I'm going to light this like the fourth take. And I'm focusing on the cigarette and lighting the cigarette. And that's all I'm thinking about. And then I hear a voice that sounded like from a block away. It's Bradley Cooper saying, what's going on? That was his line. But I'm not responding. So by the time I realized that he was talking to me in the scene, oh, man. because I was so focused on the cigarette, he must have said what's going on like three times already. Oh my At that God. point, yeah. I knew I had ruined the sh that shot wasn't going to work. <laughs> At that point, I'm, I'm, I have oh, the God. cigarette. Oh, by the way, this is the first day I meet everybody. Oh, my God. Like, and I'm like, you know what's going on? Me trying to light a fucking cigarette. And I threw the <laughs> cigarette. And I... I don't know if it made the bloopers, but I went crazy on the cigarette. And the next day, <laughs> luckily, the next take, I was able to light the cigarette, and everything was fine. But that was that scene. And then the following week, we were shooting in L.A., the interior, the inside of the police station. We're shooting that scene. And um, I have been smoking. At that point, I have been smoking like two packs of cigarettes every day. Wow. I'm constantly. So I wanted to make, I wanted it to become second nature. Did you end up liking it? Smoking. What? Did you end up liking it? I hated it. I hated oh. it. I hated everything. I hated everything. I hate smoking. So I was, so I get there and Top Phillips calls me aside and says, hey, you know, I was thinking if you want, you don't have to smoke in the scene. <laughs> but wow. at that point, I had been smoking for two weeks every day. I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> in this scene. I might not be saying any lines, but I'm smoking in the scene. I had a lot of lines, but all I cared was I want to smoke in the scene because I had put so much work into it. <laughs> and I wanted it to be a cigar. He was very specific of cigarettes. A cigar would have been fine. You know, every kid would know how to smoke a cigar. That I would have been fine. I would have been, you know, because no, I, I imagine, I visualized the scene with cigarettes. And I'm like, I imagine, I, visual, I visualized it with a cigar. <laughs> well, you're not the director. You're, you're right. Yeah, so man. that was yeah, that's that funny, dude. <laughs> and imagine a hundred extras, and the cue is a secret. A hundred extras, <laughs> a lot of assistant directors, a lot of PAs. <laughs> yeah, I think back to one, back to one. The stupid actor couldn't like the cigarette. Back to one. <laughs> did you t did you uh, talk to Bradley Cooper? Or hang out with them after before that scene or anything or not? Uh, not before the scene. And when we were shot in, I mean, we rode together. We rode together in the van. We were staying in this four-star hotel in Nogales, Arizona. I don't know if you've been to Nogales, Arizona. But, uh, I've been there, bro. Bradley Cooper. This is the conversation I have Bradley Cooper. Bradley Cooper turns to me in the, in the minivan that's taking us to set, and he goes, hey, did you have any roaches in your room? 
That's the first line Bradley Cooper said to me. Do you have any roaches? He says he spent the whole night trying to kill a roach that kept flying around. Oh my <laughs> gosh, that's a word. In a four star hotel in Nogales. And no guys, oh, where, they, where they advised us not to go for a walk outside the hotel because it's right on the border. And I guess there's a lot of cartel on the other side. God damn. And everybody knew a movie crew was there, you know, so it's like a little, a little dicey. I remember I was staying at, at a hotel and the water, the only thing that was open was a, a waffle house, like a, a block, just a, a block away. Like it's a, I got to cross the parking lot. And then cross the street. And I asked the lady down, downstairs. She was like this older, middle-aged white woman, you know. She goes, is, is, is this safe to go to that Waffle House? She goes, to walk over there? I wouldn't. <laughs> That's I mean, a good I mean, question. She'd rather get in her car and drive over there and come back. So I took her word for it, eh? Just give me a granola bar and that cup. <laughs> Man, there's some cities. I've shot at some cities. I, I shot a, I shot a movie in Lancaster. You been to Lancaster? Yeah, California. Yeah, I just went. I mean, the good part of LA County, dude. <laughs> but LA County, I know LA County, so you know. In Lancaster, I was there. I was shooting a month in a, a movie called The Boatman. We're shooting. It was supposed to be the desert and the border of Mexico. So we're shooting in Lancaster and Palmdale, that area. And my wife came to visit me the first weekend. There was a drug deal going on outside the Days Inn. Days Inn. Um, outside the Days Inn. Outside my window, like at two in the morning. And my wife had brought our cat, and our cat kept me out to the guys that were doing the, the drug deal. Let me let me get you some help, eh? I'll test yeah. it out for you. Totally. She she wanted my cat. My cat was a horse. She wanted just to be pet by the drug dealers. And um, <laughs> and my wife in the morning said. Um, I say, you want to go have breakfast? And she's like, no, I'm going home. She got back in the car, went back to LA. That's funny, dude. It's all these little cities, man. Bakersfield. Oxnard was like that, too. I was was like that. Another one. (laughs) Back out here, bro. It was right next to a Denny's. They had a uh, they had a, a monkey bars and a slide, bro. <laughs> All the here. vagabonds are attached to a Denny's, aren't they? Oh, and yeah. Me and Lisa went outside to just look for a while and sit down, <laughs> and we saw a guy come out of the hotel <laughs> with a bicycle and 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 um, socks that match his socks. And socks I said, "What are you doing at two in the morning, <laughs> just like that? Socks that match <laughs> his shorts, you know." Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I said, where is he going it? at 2 in the morning on a bicycle, bro? On a bike ride? Who rides a red line bicycle this late? You know, and I know he's, he's going to do a bunch of robberies or break into a bunch of break cars. Break-ins, but, but he also, was staying in the hotel? He was staying in the hotel? Right next door to us. Right next door to us. And then there was a lot Man. of back and forth activity in and out, and there had to be some sort of criminal enterprise. That's shady. Right there. That's Florida yeah. project shit right there. The, oh, yeah, it was that for real. Yeah. And then we, uh, the place was pretty filthy. This was just overnight to go to radio the next morning. But we refused to stay at that Sheraton, Four Points Sheraton. Cause Another that guy, night? Dick, no, that, that's the place where that guy, Victor Dollar, talked shit to Felipe. Well, basically yelled at him and told him to put that oatmeal down. <laughs> Remember that whole, oh, that 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 whole that, situation? Well, that guy, Felipe didn't know this one. Foot. The breakfast, you know. But what the, the who place. gives a fuck about some oatmeal? I know, and it was the bottom of the oatmeal anyway. So he takes an oatmeal to his room. We're done with press. We come back to the hotel. And then that manager, the general manager, pretty much treated Felipe like a child in front of everybody and said, put that oatmeal down right now. And Felipe's like, what? What the? F- you should have smashed his face, dude. And then I know. Uh, and he was like, oatmeal by his feet. You he did. It he put it on the floor. But then he made one of his housekeepers pick it up, that guy. He was a oh, man. The general manager of the Oxnard Ventura Sheraton. Oxnard Ventura. Gen- uh, Victor Dollar. He's an Oxnard. Anyway, uh, let's go anyway, to the anyway, anyway, the anyway we didn't want to stay Yelp there. Review, go, go to the Oxnard Ventura Hilton? No, Sheraton. Four Point Sheraton. Oxnard, Oxnard. Victoria, Four Point Sheraton. Yelp. On Yelp. And I wrote a funny ass comment. To share I typed it up. 
And if you ever stay there, ask. Um, I'm not staying here. Victor Donner is working. There. <laughs> I'm telling I you that now. Is, anyway, so we didn't want to I stay said, there anymore. What's the name of this <laughs> asshole? And that girl in the front that goes, Victor Donner. <laughs> Victor Dollar, uh, that's his name? That's Victor his, do- Dollar. That's his name. Victor Dollar. Sounds like, a, sounds like a wannabe stripper. Yeah. <laughs> he looked like a used car salesman. A anyway. mean made up name. Anyway, we didn't want to stay there because so that, but that's the only kind of nice hotel in that around spot there? around there. I Otherwise, heard he owns a, I heard he owns a Days Inn in Lancaster <laughs> as well. <laughs> Man. What's mm-hmm. up, fool? Where can people reach you on Instagram? You have an Instagram, of course, right, Mark Tor- Me? Yes. Oscar, oh, Torre. Oscar Torre, actor. I had to add actor because I guess there's other Oscar Torre. Yeah. Oh, dude, on our movie set, there was five Oscars. Damn. And one Oscar Torres. The direct, the writer's name is Oscar Torres. Holy shit. So Oscar Torres, Oscar Torre, and then another Oscar, and like four Oscars. I'm telling you, man, this movie and, has uh, Oscar buzz. They're, <laughs> your buzz, yeah. they're mixing up the paychecks. Uh. Man, it was it was it was driving me nuts. Every time they said Oscar, I'm like, I turn around and it was never me. <laughs> Sound guy's name was Oscar as well. Bro, when we were shooting the last scene, these were the most prepared background actor, bro. They came with their own props. They did, they did. There was a they, guy behind me. Fight so- money. This guy put his own <laughs> wardrobe, bro. He showed he showed he told the wardrobe lady which one you want. <laughs> this fool brought a stack of money that was fake money, bro. So he could be in the last seat pretending he's betting. <laughs> <laughs> and we took yeah. his prop. You and I took his prop. <laughs> Hilarious, dude. I took his money and I pass it around. I said, when I, when he wins, just give me the money. Ballin'. It was Hilarious, fun, man. It was dude. Real fun to be working, eh? That was a fun. Hey, the trailer looks great. The trailer of the movie looks great. But not put the shorts to nobody, eh? No, nobody see it. Just you, supposedly. Hey, uh, me, right now. you and your wife. <laughs> At least Martin, I'm my wife. Your yeah. Martin, we gotta go. We gotta wrap this podcast. up. Oh, I'm a, yeah, uh, me and my girlfriend are still doing it. Squad by the Bell. What's it Ew. called? Uh, Monday? And Rodrigo. And Let's also go. the uh, those podcasters in Norte. That I do with Rizzo. It's in Spanish. We have a new episode up and we have a new episode coming up. And also check out Yeah Man Podcast. Episode number 74 is out now. Also, everybody, uh, uh, September 4th, I'm in a movie with Polly Shore, Bobby Lee, Eric Griffin. Um, the movie was made by Mark Macaroni. Sam Macaroni. Sam Macaroni directed it. It's based on something that happened to him when he got married. The story of the ball, what eight when something that happened to him was the guest was a guest at the guest <laughs> house. It's played by Polly Shore. This movie's hilarious, bro, right? The fact that Polly Shore is into chubby chicks in this movie is hilarious. That hey, I mean, dude, that feels chubby, funny. Though. Against chubby chicks, they're hot too. Gracitas. But, but the way he grabs them, bro. Boy. <laughs> oh, I think Bar that lady and Barbara Baccaro or something in it too, though. I'm not sure. Dude, the next thing Wayne's are in it too, right? Yeah, a lot of people are in it. Oh shit. Mexican Ways is is in it, bro. Yeah. Yes, they are. And so is that guy that wears that sweater. Oh, uh, something ah, that was funny. Yeah. Master, okay. Bannister. <laughs> that dude. <laughs> yeah, guys. Oh, that you mean dope. um uh, Ed Basser. Yeah, Ed, Ed Basser, yeah. Ed, Ed Basser. Ed Basser. And a lot of his friends who are uh, put this, this movie has every influencer, Instagram influencer, bro. And the, the, and everybody has to post it, bro. To all your million friends. That's smart, man. The one in the movie that doesn't have um, over four hundred thousand friends, bro, on on Instagram. You on your way, cocksucker. That's right, bro. <laughs> bro I was talking to Joe Diaz today. Um, um, Joey Coco Diaz. Yeah. He's already in um, New Jersey. Bro, I'm loving over here. I saw a deer. A <laughs> deer. He never oh. saw a deer before. I love nature. <laughs> I've always loved nature. <laughs> Oscar, everybody moving back to the East Coast. Are you ever going to go back because of the co- pandemic? Not really. <laughs> I'm good Me here. Either, man. I'll go to fucking move. I'll go live in Cudahy before moving to Austin. <laughs> move to Pomona, bro. Yeah, Lancaster. What's up, Food Podcast? Shout out to James. 
Uh, Martin Rizzo, Rodrigo Torres, Lisa yeah, Esparza, Oscar Torres for being a wonderful guest. Thank Funny you, stories. This will be out this Friday. And then everybody listening on YouTube, thank you very <laughs> much, man. We're going to keep going, keep moving forward, keep watching the, the, the special. We're already going. Ghetto Platinum. Thank you very Bad much. Oh, yeah, dude. Next yeah, to Nick with Cobra Kai, bro. Cobra Kai, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bye. Later. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bad as fuck, dude.